Nintendo employees are in a panic. They scramble, searching for an idea for their new Japan exclusive game. And then, Yoshio Sakamoto stands up and the room goes silent. He asks one question. What about a game where Barack Obama can marry Marge Simpson? And so Nintendo became the best company of all time. Tomodachi Life is perhaps now known for its impeccable comedic writing and surreal situations. Let's talk to Mr. Iwata to hear more about the game, Mr. Iwata. Mr. Iwata seems to be a little busy at the moment. Mies are arguably Nintendo's most popular characters. Yep, there are absolutely no other iconic Nintendo characters at all. Wii Sports is partially the reason for this, with it being sold with every Wii console known to man. But in a sentence, a Mii is basically a character customization toolkit where you can make a lookalike of anybody in the world. Obviously, Nintendo encourages you to make lookalikes of your friends and family because it really immerses you more in that feeling of sucking at golf. A great golfer never hits the ball too far away. Or you can even make abominations like this. His name is George. Tomodachi Life, unlike Wii Sport, has no sport in it at all. You can't accidentally chuck a remote through your TV screen trying to play it. Simply put, Tomodachi Life is a life simulation game. In this game, you create your own island of Mies and watch them live their lives. It's not just watching characters do things, however. That would be very boring. You can buy food, clothes, and rooms to gift your Mies whenever you'd like or whenever they request you to do so. Its gameplay is much more similar to the likes of The Sims, where you can have control over multiple characters' lives rather than something like Stardew Valley or Animal Crossing, where you control a singular character. Think of it like The Truman Show, but all the characters act like they can see you and they talk to you all the time. Perhaps the main selling point of this game is its humour. Let's check back to see if Mr. Iwata is available now and hear more about the game. Mr. Iwata. Its weird and quirky humour combined with its charming and simple gameplay is definitely the reason as to why Tomodachi Life sold so well. Selling over 6.7 million units and becoming the 11th most sold 3DS game of all time. So I wanted to have a closer look at this game. It's very easy to take one look at Tomodachi Life and think of it as nothing more than a quirky Nintendo game. But in reality, I haven't seen too many people describe why Tomodachi Life is so good at keeping you playing. And as the video title states, I believe it's because Tomodachi Life is a philosophy of fun. Now what do I mean by philosophy of fun? Am I claiming this game was developed by Confucius or something? Is Tomodachi Life akin to the great literature of the art of war? No, obviously I'm not saying that. Why would I say that? But I hope if you hear me out, you'll understand why I titled this video as such. <laughs> We have news, Justin, that a new Nintendo 3DS title, Tomodachi Life, has been announced for an upcoming release in Europe. Welcome to Dino Island. <laughs> That's our national anthem. Tomodachi means friends in Japanese. So the point of this game, by its very title, is to play out your friends' life. You make little Mies that must live on an island together and the game's main selling point is to watch these characters mingle with each other and enjoy all the antics that they get into. First released in 2009, the Japanese exclusive Tomodachi Collection is actually the original Tomodachi game. It is basically just Tomodachi Life but for the DS and only in Japanese. I made only two Mies, one of them named Big Thinnigan and the other named Semi Colon, and they both act in the same way as the Mies do in Tomodachi Life. I wanted to try it just in case there was something vastly different about it, but there isn't really, except for the fact it's on the DS and not the 3DS, so things look a little bit slimmed down. 
So aside from the currency, pop culture references, and some food and drink, these two games are the same. The sequel, Tomodachi Collection New Life, was released in 2013, which would become Tomodachi Life in the other parts of the world that isn't Japan. So a lot of the world. <laughs> I do like the visuals for Tomodachi Collection, however, it obviously it looks better on the 3DS, but the DS graphics, I think, are kind of charming. But now to get on to the main attraction, Tomodachi Life. Okay, so as I was starting a new save file for this video, I completely forgot that the first me that you make in Tamadachi Life is supposed to be your lookalike. The one me that I made is supposed to look like me. And it, it, so with that said, this is Verge of Tears. Named as such because he always looks like he's on the brink of collapsing into a puddle of sad water. I'm Verge of Tears. My nickname is Verge. Even the way he speaks sounds depressing. As Verge moves in, the island finally begins its life. The apartment gets built and the Me supermarket opens up and Verge looks like he desperately needs therapy. So everything's going swimmingly. We go to the supermarket and... The AI takeover has begun on Dino Island. I feed Verge some fish and chips before making the second ever Islander to move into Dino Island, and her name is... Look, the creative process is hard, okay? Yes, I added a fish and a couple more me's just to give the island some more life to it, including Meg Griffin and Marge Simpson from the two respective shows of Family Guy and The Simpsons, because, you know, have to pass the Bechdel test, I suppose. As more and more me's move in, you begin to unlock cool stuff like clothes. Hooray! You also receive donations from your me's in a little piggy bank down by the fountain. Speaking of the fountain, let's go down and visit it and see what's going on. These form salad salad. Ah, so Verge is trying to make a name for himself selling food. Well, he won't swindle me. Thanks. I have a problem. This game uses real currency, and because I'm Irish, I'm getting the Euro, baby! Unsurprisingly, items cost money, which was very heartbreaking to find out, but I realized you get money for keeping your villagers happy. By feeding them food they like, and gifting them nice gifts, and partaking in little events and games, those of which we'll get to later. You could spend 12 euro on fish and chips, and if the me liked it, they would give you more than 12 euro back in return, so it's a win-win for everybody. You're basically like if God was an Uber driver. That's the best way I can describe that, I promise you it makes sense. Mies can dislike food, however, which can lead to interesting animations. Very surprised that we didn't build a hospital or, I don't know, a, a cemetery in case this stuff happens. When creating a me, there is a lot of options that you need to customize, such as the name, the nickname, the date of birth, favorite color, and even their voice. Along with all of the actual me customizing you can do with like their face and their height and weight and stuff like that, you can also influence their personality. Are they more introverted or are they more extroverted? Are they fast or are they slow? Are they unique or are they normal? Whatever that means. But these, to my knowledge, do not alter whether the me likes or hates some foods. It appears to be completely random, which is a good summarization for this game, actually. I thought it was fitting to add in bigs and semicolon from my Tomodachi collection save, so here they are. And boom, we have a good few people now. Hooray! And a blowfish. I don't know if a blowfish counts as people, but I mean, she's there. I fed her bread, by the way. I thought that was funny. Like I said before, the Mies can interact with each other in very fun ways, like here, for example. I want to be friends with Verge. Great! We watch them chat and have a grand old time before they officially become friends. How grand a proper friendship has started on Dino Island. I'm in a bit of a bad mood right now. I had a fight with Verge. I'm so mad. How did you start a fight already? You just met each other. The good news is they can make up quite easily, but the friendships in this game always made me wonder if there's any rhyme or reason to who the Mies choose to become friends with. There's really not much of an indicator. Like, all Frail and Verge have in common is the fact that they both look like they cry every time they wake up in the morning. I guess it does make for funnier moments. Intentionally adding two Mies that are a couple in real life and then seeing them actually fall in love with, like, a blowfish 
makes for great soap opera entertainment. There is a way to check compatibility between Miis, but I think there are more important places to bring up first. Just for future reference, because I feel like it's a good idea to explain all the places on the island at once, rather than listing them off randomly somewhere in the video. I already mentioned the supermarket where you can buy food and drink, but what I did not mention is the fact that there are daily foods that appear each day. They get rotated around every so often, so it keeps you coming back to see what new foods might be for sale. I also mentioned you could buy clothes, but this is the actual clothes store itself. The clothes are separated by daily clothes, seasonal clothes, and in-stock clothes, which is basically just stuff the game starts you off with, as well as any clothes that you've already bought. And in those categories, you have subsets that are divided up into male, female, unisex, outfits, and fursuits? Okay. In my opinion though, the gender categories don't really matter. I mean, male me's look just as good with female clothes and vice versa. This is the hat store for hats. This is where you buy your balding man cosplay. This is a store for room interiors where you can purchase neat rooms for your Miis. When they first move in, they get generic interiors that align with the Miis gender and personality. But purchasing a new room for them is always a good thing since they never dislike a room or they never go out of their way to be upset about it. They always appreciate whenever you buy them a new interior. It also changes up the visuals a bit, which is nice. And finally, the pawn shop where you can sell any items that you don't need to expand your piggy bank. You mostly get these items from playing mini games with your Miis. You unlock these places as you go and it really only took me about two hours of playing before they were all unlocked. I really like the shops in this game both utility and visual wise. Despite it being an island I still find it charming how there is a local supermarket, a clothes store and a pawn shop. Things like that give the game a cozier feel. Despite how crazy the places are designed. How did you get planning permission for this thing? You just scribble a load of rectangles together and called it a building. It is kind of sick though. As for the rest of the main island, there is an observation tower, a beach, and the fountain, which I mentioned before. These are just casual hangout spots that you can see your Mews chill at. They also have occasional events, and I'll give you an example. Word chain. Stop. Espresso. Donut. And these occur around the same time every day. This is the town hall, basically the settings menu of the game. This is basically where you can keep track of all the stuff that's happened and you can add or delete Mies. Finally, the other three blue boxes on this mini map are the concert hall, the rankings board, and the compatibility meter. They are pretty self explanatory, unlike you. I don't know why I said that, I don't even know what that means. The compatibility meter is what I mentioned earlier, where you can test the bond between your Miis. They only show a friendship rating for the Miis of the same sex, but will show a love rating for two Miis of the opposite sex. Which is not very based, Nintendo, I gotta say. I know a lot of this game separates things based on gender, but it would have been nice to have a little bit of gay representation. As far as I've read into the game, the compatibility meter doesn't genuinely reflect the relationships and is mostly just used for a laugh. Bit weird to have it on its own spot in the island if it doesn't actually matter but I mean okay. The rankings board hosts a ranked list of many different aspects of life on the island. Things like most attractive, wealthiest and most happy me's. The Verge of Tears is not high on that one I'll tell you that. Stuff like that which is cool to keep track of. And finally the concert hall. I think it's just best if I show you what that does. Yep, oh yeah, and there are some faded out options that you can see here on the map, which I couldn't unlock due to technical reasons, but it was the only way to get decent footage of this game, so I hope you'll forgive me. They basically have to do with Street Pass, which is present in any me related thing on the DS, so I hope you can get a gist of what these things do if you're familiar with the DS. With the island out of the way, let's check back on the Miis. The apartment is... Well, I forgot to mention the apartment. The apartment is where they live, ta-da, okay, so the apartment rooms often have different symbols on them. A black symbol means the me has an issue or a request, 
Green means that they want to play a mini game. Orange means they want to make friends with someone. Blue means the me is a little bit depressed. And pink means the me is in love. One thing I think most people will have played the game will agree with me on here is that whenever you've got a pink symbol on a room, you got so giddy and excited. There's something amazing about seeing this symbol in your game. The mini games, on the other hand, can go suck an egg. Some of these mini games you could do blindfolded and some of them are nearly impossible. Like this one of choosing the right card. It's literally just a 50-50 chance that that's it. <laughs> this catching one though, I just can never win. Here it comes. Oops, it was stuck to a string. I'm really going to drop it next time. I swear I caught that. This game is rigged. At least the game gives you the ability to toss a me around the room when you get frustrated. I'm Barack Obama. Yeah, I added Barack Obama. What's he gonna do? Sue me? I hope he doesn't sue me. I did put in an apostrophe though because he's canonically Irish in my game. As far as the development of the island goes, adding more me's and solving problems seems to progress the game in terms of unlocking things. So that's what I did. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention leveling up yet. Man, there's so much more to this game than what I remember. Solving their problems, buying them meat stuff, feeding them, and other great activities earn you money. With enough XP, me's can level up. And when they level up, you are given the choice to give them a gift, a song, a room, a phrase, or some money. Since I'm stingy, I never give money because the other stuff is more fun anyway. Like for example, a song. My comfort down. The time is When she is hashed, and the gas will be. Crashed into a tree and went into a sleep At least I looked, it's really cool Didn't get in short, so now I am living in jail Okay, the songs are actually one of the best parts about this game. Sure, there are only a select amount of genres and tracks to go with, but being able to change the lyrics is pure genius. I remember spending hours changing the lyrics when I was a kid. Of course, they likely sucked, but I mean, it's the memories that count. A little change of scenery now. Day and night cycles, wow. Yeah, this game runs on a real-time clock, similar to how Animal Crossing works. The later it gets, the more me's become tired and go to bed. I always thought these beds looked so cozy when I was playing this game when I was like 12 or 13. I would totally just like, me, 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 me in there like I would. Look at how cozy that looks. When me's sleep, there is a chance you can take a peek inside of their dreams. I believe they call this a sleep paralysis demon. Most of these dreams are just short little jokes or events that you can sometimes interact with. Some of them are funny, some of them are weird, and all of them are both. After a dream ends, you receive an item that appeared in the dream or something that related to the dream in general. You can also draw on the Mii's faces while they sleep. Wow, that just took his face right off. It's like in that scene in the Lego movie. Anyways, the game is often best played during the day and evening time when all of your me's are actually awake. The night time is a nice aesthetic change, but aside from the dreams, there's really not much else that you can do with me's. But it is getting late, so I guess I better go to sleep. Another day on Dino Island, and guess who shows up? Ta-da! Me! Time to look at the apartment building to see what's going on. Blowfish is in love! Blowfish is in love with Verge of Tears? Oh, this can only go well. One of them never stops crying, and the other swims in the tears. Actually, now that I say it, they'd be good for each other. So Blowy asks me for help to try and convince Verge to date her. I know, Blowy, I'm an expert at relationship advice. My track record is extremely good, as you can see by my spot on the rankings board. You can advise a me that is in love to say something in particular in a certain place. I chose for Blowy to sing at the beach. If those Disney princesses can sing to animals, I don't see why animals can't sing to people. And also I chose the beach, hoping that Blowy would, like, give up or something and swim back to her home planet or... I, I don't know, I... I thought it was good on paper. Time to go to the beach and see what happens. Yikes. Well, there's always plenty of fish in the 
see, uh, God damn it, my status on the rankings board will plummet after this. That is certainly the only downside to this situation in my eyes. So yeah, Verge decided he didn't want seafood tonight, so I guess he wants to be depressed on his own for a little while longer. Can't say I really blame him though. Uh, but now Blowy is depressed, and the only way to cheer up depressed people is by giving them expensive gifts. Obviously. But I don't have any expensive gifts, so... I'm gonna add a therapist to the island and hope everything sorts itself out. Immediately after Blowy's heartbreak, the entertainment island opens up. If that's not a universal sign, I don't know what is. This is a separate island that's conveniently right next to Dino Island, and it has a host of fun leisure activities and places to relax in. There's the park, which is oddly very high up on this island. It's just a regular everyday park, but you can find people doing stuff like... standing. There is the amusement park where Mies can have the time of their lives on the park rides. And finally, there is the cafe, which seems a little quiet at the moment. Is, is that egg creeping through the window? What? There are a good total of Mies on the island now. If you've lost track, that's fine, because so have I. In fact, there are so many Mies that I can now play Judgment Bay. This is a fun little game located at the beach where you can draw words or pictures in the sand and get to see which ones your Mies pick. The option that a majority of Mies stand on is the most favoured opinion. So it's democracy. Nice. For example, uh, I don't know, maybe if I put myself here on this choice and my good friend Mythical Water in the second choice, we'll see who my Mies prefer to watch on YouTube. <laughs> I mean, it is only a small little little game, but you know, it's only for laughs and giggles. This is okay, isn't it? What? They prefer that clown to me? To my video? I made this island. I own you. I mean, I'll calm myself. I'll calm myself down. No, oh, I'm calm now. Sorry. Sorry. Sometimes I, I get a little, I don't know, I get a little out of control and you know I can't control my emotions sometimes but I'm fine you know their name mythical water well what if I told you they really suck Overrated Australian, they can't even play violin. I'm a better artist, they can suck <laughs> That's what you get for being popular, you punk. So without further ado, this is the con is what's that? Is that a rap battle beat I'm hearing right now? If my flow were a banjo, I'd hit the barn door. Mmm, okay. Okay. I'm no counterfeit, I'm legit to the core. Ooh, okay. Uh, uh. My flow's concentrated, so take little tips. Mmm. When I leave the stage, the quality dips. Ooh, oh, he got him there. I could play this game and record footage for it forever and ever, but I needed to stop at some point. I still never got to see any true relationships blossom or get much downtime with the Mies since everything was opening up and like there was complete hectic mayhem every time I booted up the game. But after playing this game for a solid week, I'm still not sure why I like playing it so much. Unlike other life simulation games, you have no control over what the actual characters do. I suppose that's what makes this game so special. A lot of it makes no sense at all. The thing that makes Tomodachi Life as replayable as it is compared to, let's say, the Sim series of games, closest thing comparable, is that Tomodachi Life doesn't give the player a godlike status and instead gives us a spectator seat in which we cannot really interact with the world of the Mies. Mies are making all their choices by themselves, what to like, what to eat, and etc. It's basically a Tamagotchi concept, but on steroids. For me, it feels like the game is a breath of fresh air. I can set aside my worries for the people in my life and instead focus on the Mies. I'm able to watch them go from just moving in on an island to developing close friends and potentially finding soulmates. Not having that much control over what happens between the Mies makes this game feel more like a story while I'm still able to enjoy gameplay elements such as playing mini games with my Mies, customizing them, feeding them, attending events with them, doing photo shoots, writing songs with them, etc. 
The game just hits all the right points for a life simulator, which makes this game a personal favourite of mine. For me, I guess it's the combination of Tamagotchi based gameplay without the pressure and the pretty decent customization. What is a philosophy of fun? Did I just name the video that just so it can be attention grabbing or something? I truly believe that this game can be such a fun time for literally anyone who plays it. Because as you have seen through this video, it is utterly chaotic in a manageable way. Tamadachi Life gives the player a certain amount of input in the game, but leaves a lot of the big moments in the game to be controlled by the Miis themselves. Whether it's the ridiculous songs, the food you buy them, or the gifts that you give them, Tamadachi Life strongly offers you a fun and customizable soap opera of a video game. I think what most developing studios need to ask themselves is, what does this game offer the player that no other game can? And Tamadachi Life offers the player so many unique and unconventional moments that it separates itself from games like Harvest Moon, The Sims, Animal Crossing, and Stardew Valley. And while those games can be separated from each other in different, more negligible ways, Tamadachi Life diverges itself not only by using the Miis, the setting, and the oddball dialogue, but by allowing the player to build the foundation of the fun that they want to have. Letting them add certain Miis and buying certain clothes and items, the game can then take that foundation and run wild with it. But what really made me think about this game's message is this. When nobody is around, it is lonely, yet peaceful. The Miis bring the island to life, but I think these moments where nobody is active on a certain part of the island truly showcases what this game is without the chaos. What life really is without the chaos. I think this game's message is to embrace the fun, because one day, nobody will be around, and think of all the fun we'd miss out on then.